So are we living in the last days and how ready are you for what happens next? Jimmy Evans shares answers to important end time questions that you can't afford to miss. Well, if you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Increasing calamity, a great deception, one world government, millions vanish. A cult-like leader rises. Discover the truth about the end. So are we currently living in the last days and what does the Bible actually reveal about the end times and what are the misconceptions about the final chapter in human history? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we're looking at some of the most pressing questions regarding the end times to separate fact from speculation. First joining me around the table is someone who's sitting on the edge of their seat, Andrew <laughs> Kelly Dane. <laughs> yes. I'm just ready for Jesus to come. Let's just go. Yeah, but not <laughs> you until know? you got married and had kids. Oh, yeah, we had to do all of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, these are very sensitive days, and the church better wake up. Better wake up and be aware and be the hands and feet and stand up for righteousness. They need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered yeah. by Him so that we can tell what is light and what is dark mm -hmm. and plow forward as we're supposed to. Amen. Well, Dorothy Newton, we're doing everything we can here to share the love of God and what He did at Calvary for every one of us and everyone watching. Absolutely. You know, before I had grandkids, I was ready. Like, Lord, come now, come quickly. Yeah. And now, of course, you know, selfish me, now that I have grandkids, I don't want it to happen. But you know what, Joni? This is not, God is so displeased with so much that is happening. You know, I am so ready because you know what? We know where we're gonna be. That's right. We're gonna be with him. And I used to just sing a song. Beautiful. We'll be shouting on the streets of gold. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. So I, remember I, that. I, I, that that was an anthem that played in my room. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that that was a bop. That was to help you go to sleep. At night yeah. When you were just about oh, four years old. That was and made me go to sleep. But I, I had fun dancing around. That's right. That's right. Well. Your dad would be very proud of how many people were winning to the Lord right he now. He would. He was, you know, He's was an his, evangelist. He was evangelist at heart, a revivalist at heart, and so that was always his goal, was to I bring as many little, people with him. I love that little crackle in your voice. Listen, it's hopefully <laughs> going to be God tomorrow. Have a little crackle. Rebecca Lamb Weiss. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, I'm thinking about, I think that's what, there is a whole Maranatha worship movement, and Maranatha means, I think in Aramaic, come Lord Jesus. And so that's our prayer. Come yes. Lord Jesus. We've been praying yeah. it for years. We want to see his return because when he comes back, he will set things right, yeah. and he will judge the nations, and all these different things will take place. I was actually reading the book of Revelation today, and I was reading about the letters to the churches, and I mean, if you want something that will perk you up and make sure that you're living your right, <laughs> convicting it's those letters to the churches wow. you know it was powerful that's good cindy murdoch um these are interesting times you and i have watched a lot mm. over as friends the last 35 years with the church and things but i know for me personally we've talked about this even today over our coconut coffee when you yes. came over this morning Aww. is that how we can't we can't really believe some of the things going on in the world today it is unbelievable and what comes to my mind because we are living in these end times, as often David and I have had a discussion that if we saw a house on fire and we heard people screaming, we would do everything we could to get in there and bring right. them out. And right. if we could see people that are dying in their sin yeah. mm -hmm. and that would spend eternity in hell if they don't know Jesus, if we saw like a house that was burning, we would do everything we could to share yeah. the gospel of Jesus Christ that yes. they would have eternal life. Well, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. That's what we're doing today. Well, he is one of your all-time favorite guests because he always brings unique insight and teaching. And today, he's here to answer your end-time questions. Please welcome our dear friend, Jimmy Evans. Hello. All right. Welcome, hey. welcome. I want y'all to play James Bond movie That's music when I come out. Okay. We'll do James Bond. You hear that, guys, next? Okay. Jimmy That's what my dad that would have wanted to walk out to as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You really have always been the marriage guy. Mm -hmm. And of late, you really, I mean, there's just been a cry, really, from the body of Christ mm -hmm. and people 
to understand the book of Revelation in end right. times, but you've actually studied that for a long time. I was going to say, well. you were the marriage guy, but you were, you've been doing end times Tipping that whole guy. time as well. Yeah, you know, I love doing the marriage stuff, uh, and the Lord really called me to that, but my passion since I got saved was end times. I read my first end times book 49 years ago, wow. and even when I was not a believer, I, I was very futuristic. I always thought about the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I just kept reading book after book, uh, but then I started preaching on it 41 years ago. Mm -hmm. And but really, Joni, you were a big part of, of me kind of launching in the end times arena, because when I did Tipping Point, the series, mm -hmm. you had me on here and I did Tipping Point, and that really went viral. But uh, endtimes.com right now, we, we have endtimes.com, and I do the podcast, uh, Mark Hitchcock's on there. Uh, we have a Israel correspondent, Brian Schrager, and we do, he, he has an update every week. But we have uh, a lot of information out there. This, this, these times that we're living in, uh, this young generation is the most depressed generation ever. Yeah. And that's for a lot of reasons. But one reason is, it's just because the world is such a mess. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't, thinking about growing up in this world and raising children in this world is just depressing for them. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that when you understand the end times, you understand exactly what's happening in the world right now. The Bible prophesied it 2,2500 years ago. And it's happening just that way. But it also means Jesus is coming. And that's the good news. You know, I want to say that we believe, I believe in the rapture of the church. And I don't want to argue with you about that, but I'm just saying that just because I believe in that doesn't mean that I fully occupy until he comes That's right. and that I'm doing more than I've ever done before yes. and that we should have that mindset. Because a lot of times I hear these Bible teachers say, oh, people that believe in the rapture are trying to escape. And that's not true Yeah, at you haven't all. stuck your head in the sand like you're just waiting for him yeah. to come back. Or you're you, like, I'm going to make it count until he returns. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to kick the devil's butt <laughs> yeah. right. until Jesus that's comes. Right. you up. Yeah. What about but, that? Well, Luke 21, Jesus said, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the yeah. Son of Man. Yes. So, in, you know, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1 says that Jesus comes to deliver us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 5 says God has intestines of wrath. And so Jesus said, pray that you may be worthy to escape all these things, not endure. Mm -hmm. Could have very easily used the word endure right. if we're going to go through it. So there is going to be a rapture. It's very clear in the scriptures. And I believe it's going to be before the tribulation begins. We're not destined for wrath. Because the tribulation is the wrath of God. Uh, Revelation 6 calls the tribulation the wrath of the Lamb. And that's just such a ridiculous term. Mm -hmm. Who on earth is afraid of a lamb? And you know, I'm not talking about your family. I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, no. no. <laughs> no I'm, I'm talking about, you know, a lamb is the most innocent little yes. creature yes. on earth. But Jesus Christ came to die for the sins of the world and he has been merciful and gracious for 2,000 years in spite of the fact of how he's been treated and rejected. His mm -hmm. name is the number one curse word in the world. And the day is going to come that the loving Jesus is going to become a wrathful Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he's not mad at us. See, one of the reasons that we're not going to be here during the tribulation, he's not mad at us. We're his church. He's taking us out, and there's going to be a seven-year marriage supper of the Lamb while there's seven-year wrath of the Lamb down here. And so and there will still be people getting saved during the tribulation. There will be many people get saved during the tribulation. And so I, I believe that the rapture is very real, very clear in, in Scripture. Uh, but anyone who thinks that we're going to go through the tribulation, people say, if we're going to go through the tribulation, how do I prepare it? Buy a casket because you won't survive it. Very few survivors of the tribulation. It's going to be uh, just uh, three judgments in Revelation 9 kills a third of mankind. Yeah. One judgment in Revelation 6 kills a fourth of mankind. And that doesn't include all the other judgments. And so it's, and, and if you survive those things, the Antichrist will probably cut your head off because Revelation 20 says he beheads those who uh, profess Jesus. So let's just talk about, here's my question and I'm going to start over there with you, Kendra. Um, where are we at in the timetable of the end times based on what you understand from Scripture? At the very end. I believe that we're at the end of the end times. Wow. And so, again, Joel 3, God says, in those days and at that same time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem in 1948, I'm going to enter into judgment with the nations in the Valley of Jehoshaphat on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they've scattered among the nations and they've divided up my land. Well, you know, Jesus said the generation that sees these things will see all things take place. So according to Jesus, it's one generation. According to Joel 3, in the same period of time that God brings back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem in 1948, there's going to be Armageddon. We're 75 years into that. Ooh. Since 1948. Uh, and so, uh, so, it, so we're, we're at the end. So people ask me, you know, when's it going to happen? I don't know. 
I don't, I'm never going to set a date because that's the worst thing you could possibly do. But we understand the signs of the times. Jesus said you won't know the day or the hour. He didn't say we wouldn't know the season. And so this is my, this is subjective and this is my personal opinion. I think we're very close. And again, I don't know if that's a year, 10 years, whatever. I just think that what we're seeing in the world today, especially what we're seeing related to Israel, the, the Bible prophesies 2,500 years ago this crazy nonsense, this crazy nonsense that Israel that didn't exist for 1,900 years is going to come back and exist. And this tiny little nation the size of New Jersey yeah. is going to have all the world's attention and all the world's going to hate it so much that all the world's going to march against it. And you think, what? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. It's happening right now. Yes, yeah. we're You're, seeing it in the United States mm -hmm. of America. In the United States, and in the, in the anti-Semitism in the among young people, mm -hmm. college campuses, you know, uh, the the media, all that kind of stuff. Wow, wow, well. Wow. Okay, so short Ooh. questions, uh, yeah. short answers, so we can get all the way around. Uh, so Kelly, uh, my I actually Kendra. have a practical question. Okay. As a mom, yeah. I'm looking at my children. I have a 12-year-old and an eight-year-old. And I know there's a lot of parents that they do get overwhelmed at this conversation. This mm -hmm. is a heavy, heavy topic. How do we talk to our kids about this without scaring them, but actually empowering them of who they are, who they belong to, and what their future holds? Yeah, I don't talk to my kids about it. I let them talk to me. Mm. And so like my granddaughters is an example, my grandkids, uh, my grandsons are so kind of young, but they got the age and they say, Pappy, do you think the, you know, the rapture is gonna come? Do you think we're living the end times? I say, sure. And I just answer their questions, and I wouldn't get too heavy with them. Yeah. You know, I, about the end. But if they came and asked me something, I'd answer it. I saw you're going to have Jack Hibbs. You know, and he was part of that documentary, The Wrath of the Lamb, that we showed. Yeah. Oh, that's a great. Documentary. That, that is, was before the wrath. It's really good. Before maybe it was before the wrath. Before the wrath. Before the wrath. There you go. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes. No matter what happens in the end, God will win. That's right. Amen. So what happens to Satan? When we return with Jesus at the second coming, there's the rapture. Then we marry Jesus for seven years. Revelation 19, Zechariah 14, we return with Jesus, the second coming. The That's on the white horse That's right. in the That's full right. gear, That's right. right? Yeah. And, and by the way, it says he comes in the wrath of Almighty God. Yeah. Okay. And so we nice. come with him. Uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet are thrown alive in the lake of fire. And all the armies that came against Jerusalem were defeated by Jesus. And then uh, Satan is bound for a thousand years. Now, the, a thousand years is mentioned six times in Revelation 20. Or there's still people that are all millennial that deny that there's a millennium. So for 1,000 years, we rule and reign on the earth. At the end of that thousand years, Satan's loosed for because a Because people will be born during that time. That's right. Yeah. yeah. There, there is the uh, sheep and goat judgment uh, at the end of the tribulation. And the, the sheep go into the millennium in mortal bodies. And they're the ones that are populated. So at the end of the millennium... So we'll live a thousand years. Well, we already have our glorified bodies. We're going to have our glorified yeah, I'm we'll, so looking forward to that. Okay. Me I, too. I am too. I, am too. I, have to. I think about we'll that now. Wait till well, you get 70. <laughs> so I, can't, I can't even imagine that, to be honest. Well, I can't. you know, Re Romans 8 says that, we, that God's going to give us our new bodies that he's promised us. Well, our bodies are like Jesus. See, our, he's the first fruits of many mm -hmm. brethren, 1 Corinthians 15. So we're going to get these new bodies that are eternal. It's, it's just the most amazing thing to think about the new bodies because you never get tired. Because Jesus modeled that when he came back to earth after he resurrected. Yeah, so we got a little sneak preview. No, and he still ate food. But he never gets tired. <laughs> but he, he said, can go through walls. He <laughs> said, touch me. Touch me. I'm not a ghost. Yeah. yeah. And so they touched him. So and he had they're, the scars. they're physical bodies. They're, they're supernatural and supranatural. They're above nature. In other words, you can walk through a wall, travel at the speed of thought, all mm -hmm. this stuff. Jesus uh, ascended from the Mount of Olives into outer space without a spacesuit. And so our new bodies are just going to be these incredible, incredible bodies. But we're at the end of the millennium, uh, Satan is loosed for a period of time, and he, yeah. he goes to lead the nations in rebellion to God. And there will be some that will turn on God, even though they're in that perfect environment, which blows my mind. Yeah, I know. It, it's amazing. And there's some nations that will turn against God too, right? Yeah, it's, it's the whole world, basically. Yeah. It says the four corners of the world. Mm -hmm. And so the, he comes, and they come against the camp of the saints. That's where we live with Jesus. Wow. And, wow. and the New Jerusalem, and, and Jerusalem where Jesus is. So they march on us, and that's when Jesus destroys them, sets up the great white throne judgment. All people for all times, we've already been judged, but all people mm -hmm. for all times are Ooh. then judged. Yeah. The heavens and earth are destroyed, new heavens and earth are created, new Jerusalem comes down. So the Satan, uh, his final place will be in the lake of fire. After that thousand After years. After the thousand years. Okay, Rachel. There is a lot of signs of the times. There's a rise of lawlessness and perversion. There is the Israel-Gaza war. There's the Ukrainian war. 
But specifically, what do you think about the recent um, escalation against the United States, against Iranian proxies? You know, we just lost three service That's right. people. What do you think, uh, your feelings about that and how it plays into the end times? Well, Iran is in Bible prophecy very clearly. Uh, in Ezekiel 38, they're Persia. Uh, Iran was Persia until, mm -hmm. you know, recently. And so the, they're, uh, they're going to be a part of a coalition of nations that attacks Israel. The problem with them striking uh, America is there's been 170 strikes by Iranian proxies against our military installations and personnel in the Middle East. And so this is the first one that people got killed. Now, the Biden administration said that they're going to respond. What the Republicans in Congress are calling for is a, a direct strike against Iran. And they're saying, don't hit their proxies. They don't care. They don't care if, they, if you kill their proxies. But they don't want to get struck personally. Well, we have a U.S. carrier strike group right off the coast of Iran in the Persian Gulf. Massive military might there. Jeremiah 49 uh, prophesies the destruction of Elam. Elam is the southern part of what is now Persia or uh, Iran. And so Elam sits right here. And that's where they have their missile launchers and a lot of their nuclear installations. Our ships are right here. And it says that uh, Elam will be so desolate that there won't be any country in the world where someone from Elam doesn't move to. And it says that God will set up his throne in Elam. Mm. Now, this is a very interesting thing because I have some friends who are Iranian. And they believe that there's going to be a, well, they're about the greatest revival in the world is happening right now in Iran. But I believe that well, there's a lot of, a lot of Christians underground that yeah. love God that through the persecution have and come And they to love Jesus. America too. Yeah. If we responded to Iran, what do you think their response would be? I think they have a they, big talk. Uh, they hide behind China and Russia. I think they, they have a, uh, their rhetoric is real harsh. I think they're terrified of us and terrified of us striking them. They're not very powerful compared to us at all. But, but Russia being their buddy, that's, that's one of the things that they hide behind. I don't think they'll do anything. Now, let me say this. They believe, they believe it's, it's the Islamic Republic of Iran. They're a Muslim Republic. And they believe that Allah has called them to destroy Israel and usher in the end times. That's their eschatology. That's their end time theology. So they're not going to be talked out of what they're doing. They believe they're on a mission from all of What it might do, Rachel, is it might provoke them. Oh. All right, we got three more questions. So my question, you were ready to go, but I got my question. <laughs> Wait, you got to ask two? No, no, I didn't ask Rachel <laughs> asked two. Okay, so no, I just want, I don't want to talk about present figures, but I want you to talk about what does the Bible say about during the seven-year tribulation, what kind of leaders are going to arise? I know That's a good the question. Antichrist, the false prophet. Talk a little bit about that. Well, the first three and a half years are the two witnesses. The two witnesses really control the world during the first three and a half years. The Antichrist is there. The false prophet is there. They're kind of arising. So the two witnesses are going to be people that, we think people that probably lived but didn't die, like maybe Enoch and Enoch and Elijah. Elijah. Uh, some people believe it's Moses and Elijah. That could be right. I don't argue about it. But they're going to be, they're going to control the world. And the Bible says if anyone tries to kill them, they must be killed in like manner. They can call down fire from heaven. Uh, if it, he, they can keep rain from falling anywhere on earth. And they're the most despised people. On, they're, they're so despised that when the Antichrist kills them three and a half years in the tribulation, people send gifts to each other. Interesting thing, Joni, it says that the whole world will watch their dead bodies lying in the streets of Jerusalem. Mm. We're the first generation where everyone can watch the same thing at the same time. There are 8 billion people in the world right now. There are 6.75 billion smartphones, not cell phones, smartphones. People in the world right now can sit there and watch the two witnesses' bodies laying in the streets of Jerusalem, and then they'll be resurrected. But it's... So, uh, but they'll live the first three and a half. And then the Bible says they're going to be martyred. They're going to be killed. Then they're going to be raptured into heaven in front of everybody. And then the Antichrist awesome. is on the scene. And that's when he imposes the mark of the beast. It's actually the false prophet that imposes it. That you can't buy or sell without taking a mark in your right hand or forehead. And which is the, the word there basically just means an etching. It could be, of course, we've got the chips right now that they can do that. But this is, it's not just a financial instrument. Because Revelation 14 says if anyone takes the mark, they'll burn in hell forever. There's no forgiveness for it. So it's not, just, it's not just that I'm taking this chip to buy and sell. I'm swearing allegiance to the Antichrist and what he believes. And what he believes is totally against the Bible. Mm -hmm. You just think we're woke right now. When the Antichrist comes, it's going to be totally anti-God, anti-Bible. Wow. Well, Becca? Just how you were saying, Mom, how the rapture shouldn't make you want to stick your head in the sand. Because there is a good, strong biblical argument for the rapture. And there's a good, strong biblical argument for the church not being a part of the tribulation. Right. But it should not make believers think 
the rapture is a get out of jail free card. We right. need to be prepared for Christ's return. And the end times is so important because Jesus, some of the most scripture in the Bible is Jesus on in his earthly ministry talking about the end times. And he gives parables saying that like the 10 virgins right. waiting for um, the master to come, half of them were not ready. And, you know, he talks about the master not being ready or the servant not being ready. So there's all these different parables. And so even though if you believe in the rapture as a believer, you need to be prepared for his return. That's right. There's something today that the the church largely is asleep. Uh, But a lot of of pastors don't talk about end-time prophecy. A third of the Bible is prophecy Mm -hmm. and most of it's end-time prophecy. One in every 30 verses in the New Testament talks about the return of Jesus. And so this is something that churches need to be talked about for exactly what you're saying, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. People need to be aware. Well, first of all, if you don't don't know what prophecy says in the world we're living in, I think it's terrifying. When you you see the world, I I heard, I was watching. depressing. I was watching the news two days ago and the news anchor said, it seems like the world is broken and we just can't fix it. Wow. You know, oh and that's what it is. Forty yes. percent uh, of Americans believe we're living in the end times. Mm-hmm. That's not a secular. That's not a Christian study. That's secular. Forty mm-hmm. percent believe just because of what's happening. So I just think it's critical that we understand what's happening according to the Bible and that we're ready when Jesus comes. Yeah, and I think okay. God's dealing with this church now. Absolutely, for sure. yes. Cindy. We got to you. Okay, Your question. we did it. <laughs> I squeezed two I think questions there's there. a lot of people curious on. What part or how does the United States play in this in the prophetic of the end times? They don't. Is you can I mean <laughs> We're not there, Cindy. <laughs> well, I was thinking that I was like, what? Well there's there's two places that you can try to put America in. And one place is in Ezekiel thirty eight where it says that when the Gog Magog coalition invades Israel, that Sheba, Dedan, Tarshish and her young lions will confront the Gog Magog coalition. Uh, and the, so Sheba to Dan, that's Saudi Arabia, that's the Arabian Peninsula. Tarshish is Great Britain. And the young lions could be America. And all it says there is we're going to confront them and say, have you come to take plunder? Okay, it doesn't say anything else. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is in Revelation uh, chapter 12, where it says the dragon comes to destroy Israel and that she's carried away on the wings of an eagle mm-hmm. uh, into the wilderness. And somebody said, well, we're the, you know, we're the we're eagle. The well, eagle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But the rapture will decimate America. Okay, so there's 100 million supposed evangelical Christians in America. But if you just took half that number, Mm -hmm. and if you actually had 50 million born-again Christians in America that were raptured, were decimated. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow, wow. So what has happened recently that you can look at as far as an event that took place in the world that lines up with Revelation and end times? October 7th. Yeah. Is the, and the worldwide anti-Semitism for the end yes, to come. Because all the eyes are on him. And, and you know, it was, it, was, it was amazing to me. There's always been this anti-Semitism. When October 7th happened, it's like it lands to boil. And it's like all this hatred toward Israel, all over the world, yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Universities, it erupted. Look, it erupted. And what we see right now is this hatred toward Israel and also the pressure on Israel to divide their land. This, this two-state and what solution. what does the Bible say about that that coincides with that? The, about the dividing the land? Uh, well, not, not only that, but the October 7th event. Well, th- it says that Jerusalem is going to be this heavy stone that no one's going to be able to lift and all the nations are going to invade. And so the, the main thing is all the world has to hate Israel. All the world has to be ready to force Israel to give up their land for the mm-hmm. end to come. And that's what we're saying. What we're saying right now is anti-Semitism and this pressure on Israel to enter into a two-state solution with the people that hate them and want to destroy them, which they're not going to do. It's, it's an unworkable situation. And when it says that it's, I'm going to make it a cup of drunkenness, the Jerusalem, the, the world is drunk over this issue. They're, they're, they're out that's of their true. minds. They're insane. So what I see today related to Israel, because Israel is the super sign of the end times. Mm -hmm. What I see today related to Israel is this is an undoable situation that that you cannot pressure them enough for them to enter into a two-state solution. It's not going to happen. But there's going to be an antichrist that comes on the scene. The world is ripe right now because what's happening in Israel? The world is ripe right now for some guy to come on the scene and say, I've got the answer. And one world government. One world, we're, they, we're right on the oh, precipice yeah. of that. Well, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, they, they met two weeks ago. Yes. Oh, God. And it's, it's a horrible situation. One world government, one world economy, all that stuff. Yeah, and you're hearing voices speak up and say, uh, you need to pay attention. This just happened a couple of weeks ago, and no one is talking about it. You're not going to hear a report or anything like that. But this is the thing that we have to understand that is 
that God, all of this was written in the Bible to prepare us and so that we wouldn't be caught off guard and also to understand really the importance of what Jesus did on the cross and that he came to this earth, he died on the cross for our sins, he took our place. And so Jimmy, I know people sometimes can listen to you and they get a little afraid, especially people that don't know for sure if they're ready to meet the Lord. So would you just take a moment and speak to those individuals and then we'll repeat a prayer after you. Well, the thing about the end times is, it's the best news and the worst news at the same time. And the worst news is the world's getting bad, it's not gonna get better. The good news is Jesus Christ is coming. That's the best news I could tell you. And Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your head, your redemption draws near. So what I wanna say is any day in the twinkling of an eye, you're gonna get a new body. You're gonna go be into the presence of Jesus. All your problems are gonna be over for all of eternity. And that is the best news I could tell you. I hope you're not in love with this world because this is not our home. Mm-hmm. Heaven is our home. And so one day very soon, I believe that Jesus is coming. And remember, the worse it gets, the sooner his coming is. And that's why we stay encouraged as believers and don't get discouraged because the signs of the times around us are telling us that Jesus Christ is coming. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna be with him for all of eternity. No more crying, no more tears, no more pain. No more suffering, no more hate. There's gonna be love and joy and peace in the presence of Jesus forever. Let's pray this with me. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I pray that you'll give me the gift of eternal life. I pray that you'll give me the gift of eternal life. Forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me of all of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And give me the power to live for you. And give me the power to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's really that simple. Right, simple. That's you know, First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what he's done for you right now if you prayed that from a sincere heart. Well, we are out of time, but I I think the important thing to remember about the end times is that as believers, we should not have fear regarding the last days, but rather we should be excited about the quickly approaching return of Jesus. But we also should be all the more motivated to share the love of Christ in a way that we never have before. I mean, I'm speaking to some of you. You have neighbors, you have friends, you have people that you work with that are not serving the Lord. And God wants to use you to be a witness. So I want to encourage you to reach out to them, encourage them to uh, pray that prayer. And you'll be shocked at how many people are actually open to receiving Jesus. Well, if you're watching today and you want to have more boldness for sharing your faith, uh, that toll-free number's on the screen. And if you prayed that prayer, Um, with Jimmy, I want you to be sure and call us and let us know that you prayed that prayer. I want to send you a free book. Uh, It's actually the book of John. And in the New Testament, Testament, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it is the book of John. And after each chapter is a QR code where Dr. Gene gets will explain every chapter. So I want you to be sure and call. We'd love to send you that as a free gift. And I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God. It's so, so very important. I want to thank Jimmy for joining us at the table. We just barely scratched the surface, so you'll definitely want to get a copy of his book. That's his, This is it right here. Um, in Times Answers, 100 Real Questions from Real People. And I'll tell you, so many of you will love this. Available now. And for more, you can visit him online at endtimes.com. Make sure you let us know how today's Table Talk touched your life. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, X, Instagram, or YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Jimmy. And uh, hey, this is an exciting day. We love you. See you next time. Bye-bye for today.